Ah, uh, yes. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another series of Kerbal Space Program. And if you check out in the bottom right-hand corner, this is version 0.24, the first build of it, and it's on the x64 bit system, which is nice because my computer does run on the 64-bit system, so that works out. I mean, it, they said the dev said it might be a little bit buggy from time to time, but so far I have not encountered any kind of glitches whatsoever. Uh, and so I'm just thinking of starting a whole new career mode with everything series. Because that's what I, I promised you guys I was going to do that, and that's exactly what we're going to do here. So we're just going to call this one uh, YouTube mode. And if you notice here, we got three options now. Last time it was just career mode and sandbox. So now you can play just the regular sandbox, science mode, which is the career mode that we know, and actual career, career mode. So in this, in this one, you get actually the funds, reputation, and science. It's all active. And you can get contracts and all kinds of stuff like that. Let's pick our flag here. And if you notice in the flags, you get like all the different corporations that uh, some of you might know from the, the parts. Um, some of them are new. Sorry about that. My recording cool. cut out. Uh, but yeah, Jeb's Junkyard. That's pretty funny. Uh, and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. But I think today we're gonna pick the NASA flag just because I really like NASA. So let's get started. All right, so we have the uh, the screen here, the home screen, and if you notice, there's one extra building, and it's this one right here. So let's have a little oh, look. Yeah. And there's uh, Gene Kerman, who I guess is supposed to be uh, Gene Krantz, who was director of flights and all that stuff back in the day, back in the NASA's heyday. Um, but this is the building where you manage all your contracts, and uh, you'll see here's the ones mm -hmm, that are available. Mm -hmm. And uh, <laughs> he makes some little noises when you click on them sometimes. But you'll see that this, these ones, these first ones, don't really expire ever. Mm -hmm. So you can take as much time to get these ones. So I think we'll pick the launch a new vessel. That's pretty simple and straightforward. Um, you can read the little briefings. They're a little wordy. They tend to go run on and on and on. But basically, yeah, their prestige is trivial. So you, won't, you barely get any kind of notoriety from it. Um, but you'll get these rewards. It tells you how much money you'll get in advance, how much you'll get for completing it, how much science and reputation you'll get, and what happens if you screw up. You get minus 2,000. So, yeah, let's take that one. We'll accept that contract. Gene gives us a little nice job, guys. And set altitude record for 5,000 meters. Again, this is kind of trivial, but we can mix that in with the very first flight. So let's go back out, and all the other things are just about normal. You've got your uh, R&D building right here. We don't have any science, so we can't get this one. So we're going to start off with the very basic materials, but rest assured, we can certainly make a design with those. So let's check it out. All right, so in the VAB now, if you hover over the pods and the items now, it actually says the cost of them in the lower left hand. So the Mark I pod is 600 units, however many. It's not dollars, it's like a weird Kerbal money. But uh, So you see down here at the bottom, this, this little ticker here is how much we have available. This is how much it's going to cost. But it won't actually apply it until you actually finish and launch the rocket. So so far we are six hundred dollars using six hundred dollars. So let's go and grab some fuel. So these little tanks are costing four twenty-five. So you can see each time we add a new part on, it adds it to the amount to be deducted. Do something like that. And of course you want a parachute because yes if your Kerbals die on these missions now you lose reputation like crazy I haven't actually tested it out but I can only imagine that uh, people would not be too happy if you, if you lose your Kerbals so this is like a perfect design this will definitely get us up to 5,000 and it'll should hopefully launch 
Um, and it's only going to cost us 3100 Now, you could probably do this way cheaper just by doing this. 1300 as opposed to... 30, 3100 but, uh, eh, this just looks cooler. I mean, obviously, if you want to save money, use the cheaper parts, but I'm not really too concerned about that because, you know, it's, it's just money, and I, I don't seem to ever run out of it, so, you know. But, again, again, if you're the kind of person that really, I can't really talk during the loading screens because it tends to cut me off. I don't know why it does that all of a sudden. But, uh, anyways, if you're the kind of person that tends to, like, have a lot of mishaps happen. Maybe you want to go with the cheaper parts at first just to save some money, but I don't think this one's going to explode. You'll notice the throttle also starts at 50%, which is nice, I guess, because, you know, this way you won't just power through the atmosphere too fast right off the bat. But uh, here's Jeb, and if you notice on the top right, you have some options. This shows us, like, our rep, our money, and our science. This is our resources, like we always know. And this one's active contracts. If you click any of them, they stay. And this one's notifications. Like, if you finish one, it'll pop up. Like, good job, you did it. Anyway, let's launch this thing. Here we go. So you notice we immediately get that contract. And we get the notification contract complete. Immediately. Just from hitting the space bar and the rocket moving up, we have won that contract. So now the only thing we have to do is get our altitude of 5,000. And we'll get yet another contract. Jeb is happy as always. I'm kind of keeping the thrust low and there's a reason if you watch my other videos you want to kind of keep your speed under 200. And look there it is we have successfully completed that one. Now at this point we could just shut down the engines and try to save any fuel because Yes, you actually get money back now for parts that have safely landed. You even get money back for fuel that you save, too, which is pretty nice. So we're going to try to make sure that nothing explodes <laughs> upon uh, our landing here, and we're not going to make we're not going to waste anything. Um, I've tried out a couple things, and if you just launch the parachute on this one, you actually will break this engine off. So I'm going to have like a slightly powered descent just to make sure nothing falls off. <laughs> so let's deploy that parachute, make sure that we do land safely. I'm just going to time warp a little bit. And I'll make sure that the time warp is normal speed for the deployment of the parachute. There we are. And it looks like we're going to land right back on the track there. I think you get points or money for landing as close as possible to the KSC. I think that's the case. Here we are. I'm just going to light these engines up a little bit. And there is how you do that. So that's, that's perfect. We almost landed on that lip there. I was kind of worried we were going to tip over, but... That's about as close as you can get to the KSC, I think, so... Oh, you know what we forgot to do also? See, this is the thing. Once you're, like, worried about contracts, don't forget about your crew reports and your science reports and all that stuff. So we'll keep this data, and we'll have him do a little EVA. Precarious situation. Because if you don't do those, you won't accumulate science. You know, don't forget about your science, guys. I, like, again, I almost forgot about it. So we'll hit recover. Okay, so we're back. So we have the report. It's a little more detailed now. So we, we gained 1.5 from the crew report and 5.6 from the EVA and a recovery from the flight. So we have a total of 17 science now. And we go next, parts. So this is this is gonna where it's gonna tell you which parts you saved and you know how much money you get back. So we, we brought the command pod back, so we get the exact value refunded back to us. The parachutes the fuel tanks times three, right? And all the monopropellant, we did not spend any monopropellant. We, all the fuel that we had left and oxidizer. So we get the money back for those things. Uh, we had a 98% return value, see it right up there. So that's pretty darn good. We get 
that much funds now. We get see that's what I'm talking about. You kind of don't run out of money as long as you're not crashing and burning all the time. You kind of just have the cash. It's just always there. And of course we have Jeb back, so we have plus 25 reputation for total reputation of 47. So you notice right up here at the top, the little ticker moved just ever so slightly into the green. It was in the little gray zero before. This is negative rep over here, and this green is positive rep. All right, so let's go ahead and go over to our tech department over here. We can now afford basic rocketry, so we'll purchase that one. Unfortunately, we can't get any other ones because I probably could have done more valuable crew reports. I just didn't do them because I forgot about them. <laughs> so don't make that same mistake, but that's fine. We can make do with these things. Let's check out another contract. Ah, there's Mr. Kerman. All right, so altitude record of 1,100. We can totally do that one. And let's do... We could test out the parachute. Now these get a little more complicated because, well, A, they expire, so we have two days to do it, and I believe that's that's in-game time. Um, so as soon as you exit this screen, the counter starts ticking. See, right here it's kind of frozen at 33 seconds, because time, we're, we're in some sort of uh, dimension outside of Einsteinian space and time in this building, where time just doesn't seem to travel or go forward or backwards, so we're locked in at 33 seconds. As soon as I hit back, that'll start ticking down. So this is something to consider. Um, so we have to activate, this is where it gets a little tricky. You have to activate the part when all the conditions are met. And here are the conditions. You have to be on Kerbin. You have to be flying. You have to be at this altitude between, you know, uh, 2,100 meters and 7,600 meters. So that's like two kilometers and seven kilometers. And you have to be going 450 meters per second. So. Once those criteria are met, they'll all light up green, and that's when you deploy the parachute. I took me a few tries to figure that out because it just didn't really make sense to me. But anyways, let's go and, and uh, see what we got now. So we have uh, a new list of parts. Um, let's go ahead and use this thing. Now, indeed, two of these does equal the cost of that. 425 times 2 is indeed 850. I just like these better. It just looks better to me. I don't know. Um, but we do have the same engines, but we're going to want to go a little higher because we want to get up to that higher altitude of 11, you know, 11 kilometers. This should definitely do it. What else do we have? We have this DAC decoupler, but I'm not going to use it uh, at this early point just because I want to save as many pieces as possible. If I start jettisoning things, I'm going to lose all that extra fuel and the engine, and it's just it's not going to be as much money back. Um, I may also... Oh, we get the mystery goo. I'm totally going to put that on here. Don't forget about your mystery goo. Snap. Snap to angle. Also, we're going to want that communitron. Just so we can send back some of the science reports. Alright, and let's choose a different crew. So, Jeb, nice job on the first mission. Let's get Bill on the pilot seat, just to make it interesting. And they also changed the icons here. These looked a little different. They look a little different now, but uh, anyway, let's do it. Launch. We're going for both science... Okay, here we are. So let's take a look at our contracts. This one's going to be easy, 1100. This one, again, it's going to be a little crazy. So already, we've already satisfied we are indeed on Kerbin, so we get that check mark right there. So we're not flying yet, obviously, and we're not at the correct altitude or speed. So let's get that going. Oh, first, let's do a crew report. Do that one. And we'll do the EVA. Oh, we got that one already. Okay. JK. Um, let's do a goo from here also does not seem to be doing much right now. Indeed, so we'll keep that data and let's launch this thing. Here we go. So now you see we are flying. Satisfies that. I think what I'm going to do though is wait till we're falling. Because I think if you fall from higher than this altitude you will satisfy these criteria. Obviously you don't want to do it now while you're flying upwards. That would just be inappropriate. 
So, let's do a crew report. Uh, you know what? We could probably send that. We could probably send that one away. Let's review it. Yeah, let's send that one away. Resources charging right back up again. Let's do another crew report from up here. Send that one away also. Let's also look at the goo. Goopy goop. Jiggles and wobbles. We'll keep that one too. Bill's getting a little upset. Don't worry, Bill. We're going to make that 1100. It's going to be just fine. And... Bing! There we are. We have it. So we can cut those engines off now. And we'll just wait till we get up to the apoapsis. There's the apoapsis. Let's take another crew report from up here. The shores look inviting. I think we got that one. But we'll keep it anyway. What the heck. Let's be daring for a sec. Oh, it's nothing. Nothing new. Okay. <laughs> Whew, that was close. Alright, so now we're going to want to monitor as we start falling. We're going to monitor these conditions. So we have to be at 7.6 kilometers and going this speed. So we'll wait for that to happen. We're starting to fall now. We're a little higher than what it said it wanted to be, but that's okay. We can just fall. <clears throat> See, as we fall, we're going to pick up the speed. And we can always adjust it if we go start going too fast, but I don't think we'll, we'll be going too fast. I think it'll be just fine. Then again, I'm always the optimist when I play this game. I always say that, hey, it's going to be fine, and then I do things like not bring enough fuel to Jewel. <laughs> Which, if you watched my Jewel series, we have landed on Lathe, and we're having some problems, but uh, that might come later. We'll see what happens with those guys. But here we are, we're now in the proper altitude, we're just waiting for the proper speed. Which, oh boy, I don't think we're going to get the proper speed. Nope. Okay, so this is where we see that there are some very tricky things that you have to consider when we're doing this. Um, I think the way that I got this one the first time I did it was I brought myself like super high into space and dropped down from like the very top to the atmosphere. And that's fine. It's like you won't fail the contract if you don't do it. It won't like automatically fail you. It'll just not, you just won't get it. You know, of course, you can try as many times as you like to get it, so... That was an instance where I've kind of shown you guys... Um, it's kind of tricky to get these things. But like I said, I have gotten it before. In my like first trial run-through, which you didn't see because I didn't record it. Ooh! <laughs> Alright, and we managed to lose an engine, too. So we could have probably done that a little nicer, but... Uh, Anyway, here we are. Let's recover. We did get one contract and we did get some good science. So you see, yeah, we racked up a nice 14 science from that. We saved most of the parts. So we have a, an, again, we have a 98% return value. I guess because we lost the engine, it wasn't 100%, but, uh, and we have Bill back. Um, right, let's just see if there's anything new. <clears throat> So you start getting like a ton of contracts, and again, these are all kind of funny. Like, they all have funny criteria, but we're going to set the new altitude record of 22 kilometers, because that will help us get um, that parachute one. So let's accept this one. So now, See, now the prestige is significant, because we're going a little higher, get a little more funding from it, so let's take that contract. And let's go ahead, and what we're going to do is make this rocket a little bit better. Um, just trying to think. Do I want to add different staging? I might want to. Let's see. I'm just trying to think here. You know what? Let's just... Yeah, we won't worry about staging yet. We'll just we'll throw... We'll do something like this. Whoops. There we are. 
And just in case, let's throw two of these guys on there. We'll have this... No, we don't need that. We'll have this fire with that. There we are. So let's go ahead and launch this guy. Alright, here we are. Let's get this thing throttled up a little more. And there we go. Actually, we don't even need to throttle. We got that, uh, we got the boosters on there. To help us out. So again, we are at curb and we are flying. So again, the plan is kind of to bring this thing up super high to, like, maybe even higher than that. This way we can really start falling and picking up a lot of speed. So we'll turn on these engines now. See if we can get any new crew reports. Nope, it's all the same. How about this one? All the same. Oh yeah, we're, we're going to have plenty of fuel. We can totally get up there. Apoaps is 18, so we need to get it to 22. Like I said, it might go a little bit higher. Just to really make sure we get that falling speed. In fact, I might use up most of this fuel. I don't know, we'll see. And bam, we got that contract. Alright. Alright, we can cut it off right there. That's fine. So we'll just do a bit of time acceleration here just to get us up there. We can see the stars now. Ain't that pretty. Pretty blue and green little planet of Kerbin. Alright, we're starting to fall now. This, uh always confuse me. It's like, oh god, I'm going to land in the water, but not really. <laughs> in fact, if anything, we're kind of sliding more to the left. And I guess that's... Well, I'm not really sure why. Maybe because the planet's rotating? That's, that actually makes more sense. <laughs> Alright, so... <clears throat> now we're at the proper speed. So we have to get to the proper altitude. Oh. oh, I just missed it. <laughs> Alright, so again, this one's very, very tricky to get. But uh, don't worry, we'll figure it out in the next episode of Kerbal Space Program. Thanks for watching, everybody, and uh, we'll see you next time.